Come on, sing it with us. Hallelujah. You have won it all for me. Death could not hold you down. You are the risen King. Seated in majesty. You are the risen King. By your strife. We are healed by his new pistons. We're free, and by his blood, we're washed clean. Now we have the victory, and the power of sin. Sin is broken, Jesus overcame it all. And He has won our freedom, sin. He has won our freedom, Jesus has won it all.
like you, Lord. Yeah, yeah. There's nobody like you, Lord. Oh, come on, right where you are. Come on, just say, oh. Oh. There's nobody like you. Nobody like you, Lord. There's nobody like you. There's nobody like you, Lord. And oh, oh. We cast everything. We cast. 
cast everything at your, at your throne to say. Oh, withholding nothing, withholding nothing with the angels. Come on, just give him worship where you are. Just take a few moments just to worship him, just to give him the glory, just to give him the praise because he is due of all praise and adoration. Come on, just a few seconds, just right there, just right there. Begin to give him glory. Just begin to worship his name, begin to praise his name. Give him all the glory because he is due. Because he is due of all the praise and adoration. Come on, for 2020, just begin to worship him. The mere fact that you're seeing the end of 2020, come on, just begin to worship him. Give him thanks, give him praise, because you know what he has done, because you know where he's taken you from. January, he's been with you. February, he's been with you. March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November. Now you're seeing December. Just begin to give him glory and, and say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, because I know that there are people who did not get to see this moment. But I am so privileged to see this moment, that I am healthy, that my family is healthy, my friends are surrounding me are healthy, that they're with me, and I give you glory, because with the breath that is in my lungs, I will give you glory. With the breath that is within my lungs, I will give you all the praise, because it comes from you. I give you glory, Jesus. Hallelujah, we worship you. We worship you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We thank God this wonderful morning. Thank you so much once again for joining us in this Sunday service morning broadcast. And we are grateful for God's faithfulness, for God's mercy, and for being with us, especially in this festive season, and enabling us to be able to, uh, to see this brand new day. Uh, and before we, 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 we do that, I believe that everybody, you had a wonderful, wonderful Christmas, and uh, uh, I thank God that uh, he has preserved us. When you talk about preservation, I think many a times, uh, especially in the previous seasons, it was it sounded no, uh, it sounded like just another word. But now, when we it, it means that we know the true meaning of that word, the preservation because of the season that we are in, and we are grateful that God has protected us and He has taken care of us. And thank you so much for joining us this morning. And um, before even we hear the, the 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 word this morning. Help me appreciate what the, uh, the choir, the media team, and everybody who have made this service a success and to be able to reach to you through this medium. So help me appreciate them. And I can also uh, uh, ask you to keep on uh, upholding these teams that makes this uh, 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 broadcast be possible to come to you. Always uphold them in, their, in your prayers. May God literally bless you. And before we hear the ministry of the word, I want us to go to the, uh, the first part of this uh, service, which is uh, uh, every, um, uh, that we do every Sunday. We would like to hear the prophetic word of the week. And the prophetic word of the week uh, comes from the book of Isaiah 54, verse 10, one of my favorite uh, uh, chapter, because it's a, uh, it's a prophetic chapter to us. And it says in verse 10 of Isaiah 54, verse 10, it says, For the mountain shall depart, and the hills be removed. But my kindness shall not depart from you, nor shall my covenant of peace be removed, says the Lord who has mercy on you. Amplified version, which has a better rendition, it says, of the same chapter uh, and same verse, uh, Isaiah 54, verse 10, it says, For though the mountain should depart, and the hills be shaken or removed, Yet my love and kindness shall not depart from you, nor shall my covenant of peace and completeness be removed, 
says the Lord who has compassion on you. And this is a powerful, powerful uh, a promise that the Lord is giving unto us, especially when you're coming to the cross of this year. We know how life has been tough to many people, to, not only to, uh, 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 in this nation where, where we are, but in the nations of the world. But we, he, God is giving us this word of assurance that things may happen, but he's telling us there's one immutable thing that cannot change. And he's saying that his, uh, uh, that his love for us uh, and his kindness and his pe covenant of peace and completeness will not be removed. So no matter what you might go through, no matter the challenges, God is assuring us that, listen, the mountain may, may be removed, uh, uh, but, uh, and the hills be, uh, depart, but I have this assurance that my kindness shall not depart from you, nor my covenant of peace be removed, says the Lord who has mercy on us. And what a powerful, powerful uh, promise that the Lord is giving us this morning and especially for this week. That, and it's, this week is very, very important because we are the last week of this year and we reflect back on what the many things that God has done for us and he's, he's, he's telling us, yes, what you might think that was tough, you are still alive and uh, you're, still, uh, you're still standing because my love for you is still available. But he's giving us this assurance that even as we look forward for the new year, that this his covenant, that uh, the, the, his covenant of love, uh, covenant of peace, and mercy and kindness shall not depart. May that word comfort each and every one of us and give us this assurance that anything, no matter what might happen, we have this assurance that if God be for us, who can be against us? And he's telling us that even though the mountain may be removed and the hills, yet my love and kindness shall not depart from you. And this is what we hold on, the love of God, the kindness of God, and uh, the covenant of peace and completeness cannot be removed because God has compassion on us. May that word perform in your life today. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. And as we go to the message uh, for today, for those of you who are taking note, the title of the message this morning is, Why Did Christ Come? Why did Christ come? Why did he come? We know that uh, in this season, every nation, even those who don't believe in Jesus, they cannot afford, they, they cannot afford to be silent or, or they cannot ignore. It cannot, the Christmas cannot be ignored. For the business people, is one of the best seasons for them. Uh, uh, it's for everybody. We know that Christmas cannot be ignored. But we, we need to know, we who call ourselves Christian, we need to know why did he come? And this is uh, it's not for the, for the sake of debate, but it's always good to know the person that you follow, what is the, why, did they, why did he come? And before he was commercialized, what was, uh, be, be, no, bef before uh, he, he became an item uh, to some as, an, uh, as a season for making business, before uh, he was uh, packaged that way by, uh, uh, by some, we need to know, we who are Christian, why did he come? And when you know why he came, then we can be able even to encourage those who, are, who, are, who don't know Christ and who can be able to also defend our faith because we know the reason why he came. So before the festivity, before the, 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 the joy of, of dining together as, as families, we need to know why he came. And one point, point number one, we are going to look at, at two, around 10 points uh, that we'll be able to answer this question of why did Jesus come or why did Christ come? And one of the points is that Jesus came to express the love of God. He came to express the love of God. The book of John chapter 3 verse 16, it says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. So this is love that God has showed unto us. And so that we should not perish. 
so that the world may be saved. So it is not in the will of God that anyone should perish. He desires that everybody come to know him. He desires that nobody should, uh, should, uh, uh, should go to hell. It is his desire that many will come to know him through Christ. Amen. So we understand point number one, that Jesus Christ came to express the love of God. And this is what we know, because uh, we know that when we give our life to Jesus, when we get born again, when we commit our life to him, uh, we, there, there are three things that ha happen. Our past is forgiven. Our papa, and then we find when, we've, when we've, our past is forgiven, uh, our, our past life is forgiven, our, past, uh, our sins are forgiven, then we get what we call number two, we get purpose for living. We get purpose for living. And then at point number three, we understand that we have a home in heaven. So our salvation, our giving, uh, our uh, coming to know Christ, our believing in him, our surrendering our life to him, our uh, uh, seeking for his forgiveness, when we believe that surely he came to lay down his life for, for the sake of you and me, and then we believe in him and we commit our life to him, then we have what we call, uh, we, we get uh, our past is forgiven, no matter what you did, our, your past is forgiven, then you have a purpose for living, and then you, you know you have assurance of eternal life. Uh, that's what you are saying, that we have a home in heaven. So point number one, Jesus came to express God's love, uh, God's, uh, to express the love of God, and through that, we get what you are calling uh, remission of sin, that is our past is forgiven, and we get a purpose for living, and we know we have assurance of a home in heaven when we die. And number two, why Jesus Christ came. Number two is that he came to, er to erase the misconceptions about God. What do I mean by this? We know that there are people, different uh, uh, people have tried to represent God in, in various ways. Some people say that God is, uh, is, is, is a judge, that God, you know, he's, he's angry with sinners. Yes, but, but, but you know, there, there are people who have tried to represent God in different ways, that you have to do this, do work hard and, and, and for yourself, you know, work hard to, to please God. You have to do this, you have to fast, you have to uh, 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 walk bare feet, you have to, uh, 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 you, know, you know, do things so that you can please God. I'm, I'm not against fasting, I'm not against, against honoring the altar, but what he's saying here is because there's a lot of misconception about the faith and how you can approach God. But Jesus Christ came to, break, break the, to, to erase those misconceptions about God. And we see in the book of John, chapter 1, verse 16 and 18, it says, And of his fullness we have received and grace for grace. For the law was given through Moses, but grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. Listen, grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has seen God at any time. The only begotten Son, who is the bosom of the Father, he has declared him. So, all other people, I'm not saying they did not represent God well, but the only person now who had the clear picture of God is Jesus Christ himself. And he came to represent him and to erase any other misconceptions that other people maybe had tried to portray about God, the God that we believe in. And then point number three, Jesus Christ came to fulfill God's promises. He came to fulfill God's promises. One thing that you, I, I need you to understand is that before Jesus Christ came, there were about 300 prophecies that, that, uh, that spoke about the coming of our Lord and Savior. And Jesus Christ, he's the only leader of, of any religion whose life, who was prophesied of his coming before his birth. He's the only leader who had written uh, records that he was prophesied that he's going to come. All other religious, religion of, of faith, uh, 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 other religious uh, leaders, nobody was prophesied about their coming. But Jesus Christ, his coming was prophesied. And 300, there were over 300 prophecies that spoke about how he's going to come, how he's, uh, the savior of the world is going to come. And in actual fact, every chapter in the Bible, in one way or another, it, it represents Christ. Remember in the book of Luke chapter 24, in the road to a mouse, uh, uh, when, when the Cleopas 
and the disciples were uh, after Jesus Christ was crucified. They, they were walking and Jesus Christ joined them after his crucifixion. But they could not be able to understand who he, he was until they broke the bread together and their eyes were open. And then Jesus Christ told them from the, from the, from the beginning, from the, uh, uh, from the book of Genesis, all this to the, to the prophets, all these things were written about me. So the Bible is about him and the many over 300 prophecies that spoke about him. And guess what? The night that Jesus Christ was crucified, almost, actually, 20 prophecies were fulfilled with the night that he was crucified. This is amazing. That, uh, that everything that was spoken about him, the prophecy that was spoken about him, they, they were uh, 20 of them were fulfilled within the 24 hours that Jesus Christ was crucified. So, uh, such scriptures like the book of Psalms 34 verse 20, it had prophesied, he guards all his bones, none of them is broken. And we know very true that the, 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 other, uh, uh, people who, uh, the other two people who were crucified with Jesus, their bones were broken. But when they came to Jesus, his bone was not broken. In the book of Isaiah uh, 50, uh, verse 5 and 7, this is another prophetic word that spoke about Jesus Christ, how he'll come, how he'll be crucified. And he says in the book of Isaiah 50, verse 5 and 7, he says, The Lord God has opened my ear, and I was not rebellious, nor did I turn away. I gave my back to those who struck me, and my cheeks to those who plucked out the beard. I did not hide my face from the shame and the spitting, for the Lord God will help me. Therefore, I will not be disgraced. Therefore, I have set my face like a flint, and I know that I will not be ashamed. This is another prophetic word that spoke about Jesus Christ. The book of Isaiah chapter 9, he also speaks uh, about the same. So we understand the, the, the prophetic word that was spoken about the coming of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And that's why we get our point number three, that he came to fulfill God's promises. Amen. Amen. And then point number four, why Jesus came. The, another reason uh, is that he came to, uh, to, be, uh, to be the representative obedience, to be he, as a representative obedience. What do I mean by representative obedience? We are going to read the scripture and you understand what I mean. The book of Romans chapter 5, Romans chapter 5, verse 18 to 19, it says, Therefore, as through one man's offense, judgment came to all men, resulting in condemnation. Even so, through one man's righteous act of free gift came to all men, resulting in justification of life. For as by one man's disobedience, many were made sinners. So also, by one man's obedience, many will be made righteous. We know that they, we, we lived in a fallen world because of what happened in the Garden of Eden. That uh, when, uh, when Adam committed the, the greatest treason in the history of the Bible, when he, uh, uh, when he disobeyed the, the, the commandment that God had given him, that they, uh, they should not eat the fruit of, uh, uh, of, of knowledge of good and evil, but through the trickery of the enemy, of Satan, uh, through the serpent, we know that the treason took place. And, uh, um, and we know that through that disobedience, the sin, sin, that sin entered the world. But we know that through his disobedience, the entire world was condemned into sin. But we see Jesus Christ as a representative of obedience when he obeyed what God, the word of uh, what God commanded him to do. And Bible says that we, uh, because of one man's obedience, um, uh, because of one man's obedience, many will be made righteous. So our righteousness is, we, we, we do not earn our righteousness. We do not work for it. We, our righteousness is through believing. And we have been made righteous. Those who believe in him, we are made righteous because he obeyed. Those who, did, uh, uh, those who have not given their life to Jesus, we are still under the masses of the old rule of, of, the, of the fresh. We know that uh, the, the, the fallen nature of man, because of what Adam did, we know that you have to live in that, uh, in, in that setup. The, the, in that setup, generational curses are, are still uh, prevails. What you, are, you, know, you have to pay the price of, of, of you, know, you are still under the masses of the, 
of your family cycles. If, if, or, or, you know, if they have, yes, there is generational blessing, but also there are generational curses. So, but when you give our life to Jesus, we know that that cycle is broken because we are no longer under the masses of the old, but the masses of the new, which is through the obedience of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So it is not unto death, but unto life because we have believed in him who came as a representative of the obedience of God. Uh, of God. Hallelujah. And that's why the Bible says in the book of First Corinthians chapter 15, First Corinthians chapter 15, verse 45 and 47 to 47, it says, and so it is written, the first man, Adam, became a living being. The last Adam became a life-giving life spirit. However, the spiritual is not first, but the natural and afterward the spiritual. The first man was of the earth and made of dust. The second man is uh, the second man is of the Lord from heaven and was the man of dust. So also, also are those who are made of dust and is the heavenly man. So also are those who are heavenly. And as we have borne the image of the man of dust, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly man. So we see in the Bible is telling us that there was a first Adam. And in this scripture, we see that Jesus Christ here is called the second Adam. So as we lived a, a fallen life, because of the first Adam, then we also will live a spiritual life because of the second Adam, who is Jesus Christ. Amen. And this is, this is something that we, uh, it has a, even a bigger, deeper meaning. I remember uh, uh, the, the Spirit of the Lord was impressing in my spirit how we need to understand uh, that if, when we are born, we are born into a family, which is, we can say, uh, 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 you know, in, in, in a in the analogy that we are, we are getting here, that we are born in a family uh, 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 through the conception uh, of your mom, of your mother, and your father, that that is the, the beginning. That is, and it is important. But then there is what we call now the salvation, which is now the, the spiritual. And I have seen people who disregard their their parents, uh, their biological ch uh, parents, and they think that maybe they will succeed because now that they are born again. That um, they say that you know God is my uh, is the one who blesses me, and I I, I don't need uh, you know uh, maybe they, they think that they can be able to survive without honoring their parents. But listen, that is your entry point. That is your first. That is the 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 beginning of the blessing. And listen, there is no way you will succeed even as a born again Christian if you don't respect the beginning. Before you celebrate the, the, the spiritual, we need to begin to, we need to understand that is the beginning, the foundation, and there is the spiritual, which is now the acquired, uh, the, the, the faith. You know, we are children of God, but we cannot ignore the physical. And if you look very well, that anybody in the Bible, even Jesus Christ himself, though he was God, though he was a son of God, he had to go through the, the system that was put in place. He had a father, he had a mother, and he had to be brought up in that home. He had to be brought up honoring and respecting the father and the mother, and though he was God, and though he was a son of God. And, uh, and I don't know, I, I feel to, sh to share with you this, that it is imperative, it is important, and it is, you cannot compromise this. There must be honor to your parents. There must be honor to your parents. I remember one day uh, I had this impression in my spirit that no matter how spiritual you can become, no matter how spiritual you can become, listen, there is no, you cannot compromise what the word of God says. So there must be the physical fast, honoring the uh, you know, your father and mother. As the Bible says in the book of Ephesians chapter 6, uh, verse 1 and 3, which says, children, obey your parents in the, Lord, in the Lord. This is light. Honor your father and mother, which is the first commandment with a promise, that they may be well with you and you may live long on the earth. So I don't know, I just want to throw that to you, that as, even if you pray and fast, even if you are, you, you, you are, you are serving God, if there is no blessing, if there is no the, the, the father and mother blessing, you will struggle with the spiritual because it is a physical fast before the spiritual. So there must be honor to the parents 
before you succeed in the area of, of the spiritual. And I remember uh, uh, one thing that, that, that the Lord opened my eyes to see is that even the people that I'm serving with and the people that I'm raising uh, and the people that I'm pastoring, the Lord told me, make sure they understand the message of the Father's blessing. The message, be blessed, the, 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 the parental blessing that you have there. You have the blessing that comes by honoring your father and mother. Because if you have not honored them, listen, you will struggle forever. You will struggle in your marriage. You'll struggle in your finances. You'll struggle in life. You can be born again. You can be speaking in tongues. Because, but all these things, if there is no honor to the physical first, to the father and mother, then how, no matter how born again you are, no matter how much you, lo you, lo you love God and serve God, there must be that foundation. This is, that is for, by the way, uh, I, I had not intended to share that, but it's part of, I believe it's always good to understand that. And I remember one day they all shared with me this, that there is nobody who will be able to submit to the authority of the church if they have issues with their parents. Because they cannot submit to any authority if they have issues with their parents. And this is always, I always advise people, please sort out the business with your mother and your father. Make sure that you are correct, we are, you have life with them. And then you can be able to serve God freely and your life will be successful. So this is the physical fast and then the spiritual. Uh, that is, by the way, anyway. Then, point number five, why Jesus Christ came. Why Jesus Christ came. We say that point number four is that he came as representative of obedience. So as he obeyed, as he obeyed God, as he obeyed the word of God, as he obeyed his parents, as he obeyed uh, 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 even uh, the, the statutes that were put in place, then we, we are supposed to be like him, obeying every word of God. So verse, uh, point number five, he came to be a substitute a substitute sacrifice. Jesus Christ came to be a substitute sacrifice. Hebrews chapter 2 verse 15 and 17 um, it says uh, no, Hebrews chapter, yeah, chapter 2 uh, verse 17 and 18 it says therefore in all things he had to be like his brethren that he might be merciful and a faithful high priest in things pertaining to God. To make propitiation for the sins of the people. For in that he himself has suffered. Being tempted, he is able to aid those who are also tempted. So he became the substitute sacrifice. Amen. So that because we know that nobody else could be able to pay that price. We know, uh, you know, there must be a, a, a lamb without blemish. Just like in the Old Testament when they were, they were atoning for their sin. There needed to be a lamb without a blemish. And the only meaning, a lamb without a blemish, which, which was a type and shadow of a, of a lamb that has no sin. And the only person who was available to do that, there was nobody in, on this earth who could have done that. But Jesus Christ was the only lamb without blemish or the only human being without sin. So he came to be the substitute uh, sacrifice. Then point number six. He came. Why did Jesus Christ come? Number six, point number six is that he, ca he came to be the mediator between God and humans. He came to be the mediator between God and humans. First Timothy chapter 2, verse 5 and 6, it says, For there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus, who gave himself a ransom for all to be testified in due time. So he is the mediator. He, he, was, he came to be the mediator between God and humans. We knew our sin separated, uh, uh, separated us from God, but we needed a mediator. Hallelujah. And the only mediator between us and God, uh, it is only a person who was fully God and fully human who could be able to mediate. And that person was Jesus Christ. Amen. Point number seven, why did Jesus Christ come? He came to glorify God. He came to glorify God. Jesus said, for this purpose I came to this hour. Father, glorify your name. The book of John chapter 12, verse 7. So he came to glorify God. And then uh, the book of John chapter 17, 
verse 4, he's, Jesus Christ said uh, say, uh, almost similar word. He says, in the book of John 17, verse 4, he says, Jesus prayed, I glorified you on the earth, having accomplished the work which you have given me to do. So Jesus Christ came to glorify God. And guess what? This is expect, the expectation that God has in, uh, on us who are believers. That now that you have given your life to Jesus, remember what we said, when you give your life to Jesus, your past is forgiven, and then you find your purpose. You, 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 know, you are able to now to know exactly where you are born, so you capture your purpose, and then we know that now after you have done that, you have, uh, uh, you know, you have eternal life, uh, no, you already have eternal life when you give your life to Jesus, but then, then we have a home in heaven because now we have become his. So that by the time, even when you die, if you not be raptured, people will say, like the Bible talks about David, he says, Bible says about David, that he served the purposes of God and then he rested. I will ask you this hour, are you serving the purposes of God? Or are you serving your purposes? Because once you find, when you become born again, you find your purpose. We you know the reason why you are born. You rec recapture your purpose. And I'm not saying that maybe what you wanted to become when you are growing up is not what you are doing or is not what you are so supposed to do. But you will know you are in the will of God by the peace that you have by what you are doing. So we recapture our purpose when, uh, um, by, uh, when we recapture our purposes we, we, uh, our purpose, we glorify God with it. So actually, it is a duty. Just like Jesus Christ glorified God by serving the purposes of God, so it is the same with us believers. When we find our purpose and we serve God through, uh, 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 through the, uh, the, the purposes, and when we understand the purpose and we serve God, then we glorify God by doing that, by, by doing what he has called us to do. And then number eight, point number eight. Why did Jesus Christ come? He, be, he came to be our example in life. He came to be our example in life. The book of First John chapter 2 verse 6. It says, he who says he abides in him ought himself also to walk just as he walked. So Jesus Christ became, he's an he, he, he came to be our example in life. The book of Hebrews chapter 12 verse 1 and 2. It says, therefore also. We also, since we are surrounded by so great a crowd of witness, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily ensnare us. And let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finish, finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and who has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Wow. So he's our example. What does that mean? He's our example with this scripture that you have read. That we, 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 you know, we cast away every weight that so easily is near us. And we run this race. We despise the shame. Because sometimes you go through shame. Yes. You go through, uh, people will spit on you. People will, uh, will do all manner of things. But we are looking unto Jesus, the order and the finisher of our life, of our faith. And we say, if they despise Jesus, some of them did not believe that he was the son of God. Some of them did not believe that he was called. Some of them did not believe that he had the capacity or the ability to deliver what he said. But yet he had his eyes set on finishing the race and finishing well. He was despised. In some places, he was rejected. And we looked unto Jesus. When people reject our gospel, when people reject you, when people uh, uh, do all manner of things, when people spit on you, when people even uh, uh, slander you, you remind yourself that my master, Jesus Christ, he had to endure this. And I am looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of my faith. So uh, they may crucify you. Uh, uh, they may do all manner of things. But your eyes are set on that crown, knowing I have to finish strong. I don't have the mind. I, I don't have the, 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 you know, the time to fight the, 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 the battles on or, or, you know, the sideshow that the enemy may try to bring on my walk of faith. 
you have your eyes said that no matter the challenge, no matter the, 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 no, the, 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 you know, the, no matter the slander, no matter the selfishness that you see uh, people may be exhibiting against you, we know that Jesus Christ had to endure the same. And you are not an isolated case. They despise Jesus, they, ca they will despise you if you are a child of God. They rejected Jesus, you will be rejected. They spoke lies about him. They will, people will speak lies about, uh, lies about you. They, they crucified Jesus. Even before he, they crucified him physically, they crucified his character. People will crucify you. People will uh, talk about you. Listen, you are not an isolated case. They did it to Jesus. They will do it to you. And what do you do, uh, what do, you do when this happened? Looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. Hallelujah. And that's why we find ourselves, in every circumstance, we ask ourselves, what would Jesus do? And then point number nine, why did Jesus Christ came? He came to be the pattern of our redeemed bodies. He came to make a pattern for us, the pattern for our redeemed bodies. The book of First Corinthians chapter 15, verse, 40, uh, 15, verse 42 to 45, he says, So also is the resurrection of the dead. The body is sown in corruption. It is raised in incorruption. It is sown in dishonor, it is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness, it is raised in power. It is sown in a natural body, it is raised in a spiritual body. There's a natural body and there's a spiritual body. And so it is written, the first man, Adam, became a living being. The last Adam became a life-giving spirit. So Jesus Christ is a pattern of our redeemed bodies. And then finally, the last point, why did Jesus Christ come? He came to sympathize with us as a high priest. He came to sympathize with us as a high priest. For in that, Bible says in the book of Hebrews chapter 2 verse 18, it says, for in that he himself has suffered, being tempted, he is able to aid those who are tempted. The same book of Hebrews chapter 4 verse 14 and 16, it says, seeing that, that we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus the son of God, let us hold fast our confession. For we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weaknesses, but was in all points tempted as we are, yet without sin. Let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in times of, of need. So we see he came to sympathize with us as a high priest. There's other job description. We can add that he came to destroy the works of the devil. He came to destroy the works of the devil. Point number 11. Uh, in the book of John chapter 10, verse 10, the Bible said that the thief cometh not but to kill, steal, and destroy. But I came that they may have life. They may have life to the full until it overflows. The other renditions say that I came that they may have life in abundance. So what does that mean? Jesus Christ came to destroy the works of the devil so that you can have life to the full until it overflows. So also we know that he became the propitiation of our sins. He came to restore us back to God. And we celebrate, as we celebrate the, the, uh, this season, in this festive season, we know that this is the reason why he came. And there are so many other reasons, but these are the main reasons that he came. And as we celebrate, we don't just celebrate like the worldly people. We know we are celebrating the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the Ancient of Days, the soon coming King, the one who, had, who bought us with a, uh, with a price, not, like, not with corruptible things like silver and gold, but he paid the price with his blood. So we thank God and we celebrate during this festive season and we know that we are celebrating him who has called us out of darkness into this marvelous light. We come to celebrate his goodness and we come to celebrate like those who understand very well the reason why he, he came. And we know that we are no longer uh, uh, slaves. He has bought us with a price. We are no longer in the marketplace of sin. He has redeemed us and he has paid the full price. So we celebrate this season, this season, festive season, and we celebrate what the Lord has done for us. So God literally bless you. God literally bless you. And I believe that those few points that we have mentioned, they are going to, you are going to engrave them in the tablets of your heart and always rejoice because we know that we have a hope. We are not like those who don't have hope. Amen. Amen. God literally bless you. Amen. And because of time, at this point, we are going to go to the, our next part of this uh, uh, service. 
where we are going to now celebrate the King of Kings and honor him with our substance. The sweat, the, the, you know, he's the one who has enabled us. He's the one who has provided for us. He has given the grace. He has preserved us. Let's also uh, honor him with our substance. And may God richly bless you. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you so much for participating in that part of the service. And uh, I want us to pray for the offering and speak a blessing over you. Uh, Father, we thank you and we bless your holy name. Thank you, dear Lord, O oh God, for it is you who has enabled us, O oh God, even to be able to participate in that part of the service where we honor you with our substances. We believe your word that say that we bring our tithes into, uh, into your house, that there may be uh, food in your house, O oh God. There's a promise that comes with that, that you're going to open the floodgate of heaven and uh, the, the windows of heaven. So there will be even no enough room to contain uh, that's what you're going to release unto us. Your word also says that you're going to rebuke the devourer for our sake. So by faith we believe what we have done in obedience, we are going to experience the manifestation of every promise that you have spoken to, those, uh, to us uh, through those scriptures, O oh God. So by faith in the name of Jesus, I lift up the offering that has been given to your able hands, O God. And I pray let it come unto you like a sweet incense, O God. Dear Lord, O God, I remember each and every person. And I pray that you open the front gate of heaven and pour out your blessing upon them. And dear Lord, O God, also I pray those who have desires even to, uh, 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 to set up new businesses. Those who have desires, O God, even to have promotion. I pray, dear Lord, O God, that, that, as your words say that they... Expectation of the Elisha shall never be disappointed. I pray, may you make a way for them where there is no way. And I pray in the name of Jesus Christ, as you have given us a prophetic word today, that, uh, that you, uh, even though the mountain be removed and, and the hills be, uh, be removed, O oh God, yet your love and your mercy and kindness and the covenant of peace, dear Lord, O oh God, you say that it shall never be removed from us. And I pray in the name of Jesus Christ, may you look upon your people favorably this morning. And I pray in the name of Jesus Christ, Enlarge their coast. And dear Lord, oh God, let there be a testimony in the mouth of each and every person this morning because you are God who answered it by fire. We thank you and we bless your holy name. Amen. Amen. As we come to the conclusion of our service this morning, I just want to remind you that, uh, uh, that, uh, that, that next week when you are, we are having the, the crossover service, but uh, unfortunately we will not be able to attend in person because of the, the condition and the, the government directives. So unfortunately, for the first time ever, since actually personally I became a pastor, we are not going to have an in-house uh, in gathering whereby the, we will open the doors for everyone. But we are going to broadcast the, the, uh, our live services from, next, uh, uh, from 10, uh, 10 p.m. It will be a two-hour service. We are going to broadcast live from this house the only people who are allowed to come is only the ushers and the media team. Uh, not the ushers, not the worship team and the media team who will be capturing uh, the, the service live. So please uh, bear with us. We can only do much and we don't want to go against the government directives. So we are going to have our crossover service uh, 
as usual, but this time online. So we, uh, our services start at 10 uh, p.m., and then we are going to wind up uh, by midnight. So please uh, be prepared. Uh, uh, remember that day also. We are going to, uh, the, to have a, a time of worship, glorifying God, but online. So please bear with us and we'll request you to share with your friends. Uh, let everybody uh, participate uh, during that time. And I believe that God will still speak to us what he has in store for us. So God is to bless you. And remember to uh, help us uh, reach out to as many people as possible uh, for that crossover uh, service. We'll keep you posted on when we are going to come back uh, for uh, um, in-person service or, or whereby we open the doors for, for everyone. But for now, because of this condition and the, the, the government directives, we have to obey and also keep safe. So we'll keep you posted. But the service continues. And uh, we are looking forward to, uh, uh, to open the doors for you uh, as soon as possible, as soon as the government lift up this, uh, uh, these di directives. I believe we are going to meet again in person. But for meanwhile, we still continue to meet on, on, on over the, this platform. So looking forward to see you uh, next week for the crossover service. But still remember that uh, the daily nuggets, I'm still posting them. If you can be able to share with your friends, if you, you can go to our church website, you can get the, the daily nuggets. This is a, a daily devotional that we've been writing uh, for quite some time now. Let them be an encouragement to you. Share with friends. And um, I, I believe uh, also we will be able to grow as we study the word of God together. So thank you so much. Love you. And on behalf of the uh, Revival House leadership team, we love you and we 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 really appreciate your support we i think i don't know where we would have been why it not for the people who have supported through prayers through uh, their giving through their service to this to the church we really really appreciate you so so much so god is your bless you continue to enjoy and remember keep safe and also don't for, forget the devotions and prayer it is what will keep us going and keep us uh, uh, strong in our walk of faith. So God bless you, and let's share the grace together. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. So God bless you. And also we celebrate that uh, Pastor God now is out of hospital. And by the grace of God, he was able to enjoy Christmas with the family. So thank you so much for your prayers, for your support. And uh, may the love of God continue to be uh, with you in everything that you do. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, and God bless you. Amen.